And good morning. Glad to see everybody here this nice, beautiful sunshine day with a little bit of ice, but not too bad. We're glad you made it this morning. If you're visiting, we're glad to have you here. Hope you come back and visit again. Uh, if you're not in Sunday school, let me invite you to come to Sunday school. We have some great Sunday school classes. I'm going to try to bring that out every week. There's some great Sunday school teachers come hear what God has laid on their heart, and I promise you, you'll be blessed. We had 44 in Sunday school with an offering of 2000 $807.51 to come through Sunday school. A few announcements. Don't forget, uh, this afternoon at 4.30, there is a board of directors meeting. For those who are on the board of directors, you know who you are. So this afternoon at 4.30, we'll meet. Also, don't forget, Monday, February the 7th at 6 o'clock is WMU. That is here at the church, right, Miss Betty? So don't forget about that, ladies. That is tomorrow night, I do believe. Yes, it is. Also, don't forget there is a Deacons meeting coming up next Sunday at 4.30. Also, the Easter Cantata practice. Okay. That begins next Sunday, February the 13th, following the evening service. This year's Cantata is, is entitled, God So Loved This World. So Matt's going to charge of that. So there's plenty of room up here for you to be part of the Cantata, okay? I thought the other one, and with the time frame we had, we turned out pretty good. So this one is going to start a little bit earlier. So that begins next Sunday. Don't forget about that. That begins next Sunday. Next Sunday, the Easter Cantata practice following the evening service. Also, the men's prayer breakfast is coming up Saturday, February the 19th. That's a couple of weeks away. That's down here at Kathy's Cafe at 8 a.m. The cost is $8 per plate. So come be a part of that, men. Also, the Valentine Banquet. That is coming up Saturday, February the 19th. Lots of wor hard work is going into this. So, so this is a youth fundraiser, so come please support this. Uh, each plate will include a grilled chicken breast, corn, green beans, ma mashed potatoes. And, and that's, it might be smashed, like I said last time. Smash mashed potatoes and a side salad with dessert and drink. The cost is $10 per plate. Come and celebrate, and if you like a go plate, we can do that. We can deliver probably. A few of us might be able to deliver. So if you can't make it out tonight and want to support the youth, just remember that it is coming up two weeks from yesterday at 6 o'clock. So come support your youth, okay? Also, the Winter Youth Rally is coming up Sunday, the February the 20th. That's the day after that. The Youth and Night of Macedonia will be going, uh, joining other groups around the association at First Baptist Church, Newburn, to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, the youth will be uh, need to lead the church at 3.30 p.m.? 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. So note that, youth, 4 o'clock. Anybody, anybody is welcome to go. Okay, so that is two weeks from the day, leaving at 4 o'clock. Now, can't everybody go, Matt? we got to have a few people here. Uh, ain't that right, Brother Charles? <laughs> well, hey, as long as you're in church, I guess it don't matter, right? But anyway, just remember that if you'd like to go, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, are there any other announcements? Let's do, please remember all the lost loved ones we've lost here lately. Uh, the many are hurting, uh, many here have uh, lost loved ones, so just keep remember those. Ms. Carolyn, uh, the Dawson family, Brother Kendi's family, um, uh, many, many more. Uh, so remember those in your prayers also. Any other announcements? Yes, sir, Brother Terry. The Bible study will start again this Thursday night at 6 o'clock, and that's the David Jeremiah Bible study. I can't remember the name of it, but where do we go from here? Thank you, Brother Charles. So I know that's going to be a great time of fellowship together, so come be part of that if you want to. Any other announcements? If not, can I have the ushers, please? Hank, will you pray, please?
is under. They are welcome to come up here. I have bulletins for you. And we're going to talk just a few minutes. So every kiddo, if you're 12 years old and under, you're welcome. If you're a little older, that's okay, too. You're welcome. I usually have enough bulletins. And y'all are going to help me out for a few minutes. For the kiddos that are young enough for the children's church, it looks like Miss Kellyanne and Mr. Patrick will be taking the three, four, five, and six-year-olds back. So that'll be fun. All right. Come on up. Gil, you look so excited. <laughs> You're, look, no poinsettias in your seat today. Look at that. <laughs> you got the perfect spot. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you. That was beautiful. All right. Oh, thank you very much. Another beauty. I like that. So how are y'all this morning? Good. I'm so glad. So who are we going to talk about this morning? Y'all almost said it as loud as I really wanted you to. Try it again. Who are we going to talk about this morning? Jesus. Jesus. Very good. So we have celebrated Jesus at Christmas. Did we stop just because Christmas ended? Absolutely not. We continue to celebrate that Jesus is our Savior. He, we are the love of his life, and he is the love of ours, too. So we can celebrate Jesus walking with us every single day. We can tell others about Jesus as we walk through life every single day because he gives us the words that we say, the love that we have, the way that we even treat others. So let me ask you something. Uh, Y'all know I talk a lot. Is that right or wrong? Am I right about it? Yeah, it's okay. I've been told that before. <laughs> Do y'all talk a lot? Okay. Y'all talk a lot, too? All right. So I when we hear, room. you do what? I clean my room. You clean your room. You are awesome, man. That is cool. And so, I clean my room. I'm so proud of you. Keep I on clean doing. my room. Y'all do it to it. Y'all are awesome. <laughs> so when you talk to others about Jesus, your words have a special power to them. And it's not the power of us. I don't have power in my words that I say. You know what I'm saying? We talk a lot. We say a lot of stuff. But when we're talking about Jesus, there's a special power that comes with that because Jesus takes what it is that we say, and he can turn it into whatever that person's heart needs to know about him. And even if we don't know exactly what to say, Jesus knows exactly what we need to say, and Jesus knows exactly what that person needs to hear. So there is power in the words that we say. So every time that we're with other people, we need to think about the words that we say, how we say them, how we're treating others, and what that does to them. Are they hearing words that Jesus wants them to hear coming from our lips? So with all that, I'm going to read you just a little bit. Jesus was in his hometown, and Jesus, his power, his, his words don't just have power. His words are power. That is what it is. For us, we have his power that can come through us, so our words can have power through him, and his words are power. So let me read you a little bit. It says, let me make sure I get the right one, because we're going to kind of just read through. Do, 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 do. All right, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is on all red letters, so that's what Jesus is saying. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering the sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now listen to this. This I love. He closed the book, and he gave it to the minister, and he sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue, so in that church, were fastened on him. So Jesus is awesome. He reads. He reads from the book of Isaiah. He reads from the book of Isaiah. He hands the book to the minister. And the minister reads. He's very quiet in the way that he presents his power. But that power, he doesn't need to get up and shout it. He doesn't need to get up and dance around it. All he's got to do is say it. And he sat down and then they were like, Not has power, but those words are powerful. So here we go. It says, In this day he began to say to them, This day the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. 
and they're kind of whispering around there saying, it's just the sun, isn't it? It's not just like the sun. Didn't they really have power? When they went home, ham, everybody knows that he was just going to marry and Joseph. They think, well, isn't he just a regular fella? No, he's not just a regular fella. He's not just Joseph's son. Whose son is he? God's son, who brings us power. So I'm going to go on down to the bottom of some of the scripture that you're going to read in your bulletin. And it says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word, for his word was with power. So I want us to remember that because we are talkers, we do, we talk about a lot of stuff. But let's make sure that when we're talking to others, to our friends, and I'm going to throw this in there. Even to the people we don't know, even to the people we may not be friends with yet, even to people who have even made us mad sometimes, because that's going to happen sometimes, Jesus wants them to know the power of his love goes way past anything that anybody else can do. So we want to share his love. We want to share the power of his word, because when he works through those words, we know that those hearts are touched, Right? So you can guarantee it's a promise that when you speak about Jesus, Jesus will make sure that that person hears exactly the love that they need to hear. Okay? So your words are power. His words are power where he works through us. So thank y'all for being here, and thank y'all for sharing God's love everywhere that you go. When you share your heart, you share your love. You're sharing Jesus with somebody. So you keep doing that because you make a difference in your church. You make a difference everywhere that you go when you share God's love. Okay? So we're going to close in our prayer time. Do we have anybody who wants to volunteer to say a little prayer to kind of get our worship service started? Okay, I don't see anybody volunteering. But that's okay. Just say, are you volunteering? Yeah, volunteer is like, I'm going to do it. And you're going to do it, aren't you? Do you want to help out too? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We're going we're gonna to have a little prayer time with Ellie and with Alexis and with Caroline. She's going to close us out. So y'all pray your hands. Y'all just point those hands to heaven. Pray your eyes. We're just all thinking about Pray, pray. Last time I did something awesome. For the people that don't have homes and the people that need to learn about Jesus and God, and for the people that have COVID and can't come to church anymore. I'm going to pray for y'all, for y'all to have an awesome week. Is that cool with y'all? Thank y'all for your prayers. Lord, thank you for this day and for the love that you've given each one of these kiddos. Thank you for bringing them to church. And, Lord, thank you for the love that they can show to their parents as they go through this week. And, Lord, I pray that for us grown-ups and for the kiddos all alike, that we remember to show our childlike faith and our childlike love for you. And um, just forgive us of our sins, Lord. Forgive us of the times that we're, we're not doing the things that you would have us do. But help lead and guide and direct us with your power to do what you would have us to do in this life and in our walk every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.
glad to be in God's house this morning. Yes, sir. Amen. Are we ready to worship this morning? Yes. We come with a heart that is set for worship. Yes. Uh, we did a, and I'm going to just read a little bit of what we discussed today in a Sunday school with the youth, because it has to do a lot about habits and, and our habits of worship. I want us to do the look, take a, a look at ourselves when we worship today. Is our habit of worship pleasing to God? Because habits, yes, they're small, but some of them can be deadly. I mean, you ever change uh, Toby Lynn's diaper, you know. She's small, but what's in that diaper is deadly. <laughs> but our habits, our habits when we worship, are we, are we pointing ourselves to God? Or we point others away from God in our worship? So we're going to stand and sing some hymns this morning. I want you to stand and sing hymn 502 with me. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus Just to take him at his word Just to rest upon his promise In your hymn books, go to page 104 as we're going to sing Amazing Grace.
on the screen, it's on the hymn 668. We're going to sing the doxology twice through. sing it the second time through there's a lot of stuff we put above God we put our jobs, we put money uh, we might put our spouse we might put just anything games, uh, the phones um, anything above God and, and this hymn this hymn, the docs are just a beautiful hymn about putting God first about who, it points out who we need to praise as follow believers and follow Christ followers God has to be number one. It's not phone, it's not job, it's not spouse, it's, it's not self, it's God. And when we sing this through this one last time, without the amens, I, I want us just to put everything at the altar to this morning. Um, Miss Mary said a most beautiful prayer this morning that if the altars need to be used this morning, let them be used. The altars are here not just during the invitation. If God's calling you to come to the altar now, or when Brother Charles is preaching, he's, he's going to continue the preaching. He's, it's not going to bother him at all. But it's time for us, church, to get right with God. It's time for us to get right with God and have a revival in Macedonia Baptist Church. And that's putting God first. So let's sing this hymn one last time. Praise God from Charles as he comes. Amen. We're glad to be in God's house this morning. Some of y'all didn't hear that. Are we glad to be in God's house this morning? Amen. If you would, take your Bible this morning and open to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 as we continue our study going through what discipleship means. What discipleship means. Many, far too many today are trying to carry burdens they were never intended to bear. It's religious burdens, it's financial burdens, it's burdens of life, burdens of ministry, burdens that really don't belong to you. They weigh us down, they cause spiritual exhaustion, they cause spiritual burnout, ministerial burnout, fellowship burnout, they cause burdens and they end up causing us displeasure in our walk with God. Now we have to understand, now when I say that some people are like, Hip, hip, hooray, that means I don't have to do anything as a Christian. That's, that's not what I'm saying. A Christian's life has burdens in it. A Christian's life requires ministry and it requires service. The problem is, is we got too many people putting burdens on other people or putting burdens on themselves that they think, well, if I don't do this and I don't do that, 
that I'm not being faithful. And the reality of it is, each and every one of us were created to do certain tasks within the kingdom of God. Amen? We have to figure out what those tasks are. And so Jesus speaking in our text today out of Matthew chapter 11 and verses 28 through 30. And if you're there, say amen. He states, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you. God, we seek you. and We seek your truth today. We ask, God, that you would show us what it's like to find rest in you. Because discipleship means rest in the Lord. That, God, you have sent us with tasks. You have called us to go and do. But you've also equipped us for what we need to go and do. But, God, sometimes others put undue burdens on us. Sometimes we put undue burdens on ourselves. But God, the only way to find rest is in you. The only way to find joy and service is through you. And so God, this morning, let us understand what it means to find rest in the Lord. It doesn't mean to stop working. It means just to serve the way you want us to serve. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Often we as people like to feel as we have to earn everything. We, we'll put our trust in religious rules of do's and don'ts. And that was the case of the Pharisees. I, I mentioned this in a previous message that the Pharisees had boiled down the law in the 613 commands. Or 13 laws. It was 365 things of uh, you don't do this. And it was another 200 and something of, uh, of messages of we can do this, but we, we, and then the 300, we can't do this. And, and often in life, that's how we tried to boil down our Christian walk. We, we try to have this list of do's and don'ts. If, if I don't do all these things, then man, I am an awesome Christian, and I am absolutely awesome. And if I do all these things, then I must be the most faithful Christian there ever was, and I am God's man, or I am God's woman. And then if we, we end up doing something that we're not supposed to do, or we don't do something that we're supposed to do, we come up with this idea we failed, we can't do it, God can't use us no more. And because we, 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 we reflect on our life and we think that God will only accept us if we're this certain way. And so we end up weighing ourselves down and burdening ourselves down was something we were never intended to do. We have to understand that the Pharisees, who were the religious leaders of the day, them and the Sadducees, they not only had the Torah, which was the first five books of the Bible, the, the books of the law, they also had the Talmud, which was another list of their history and all these other rules they put on, and they put them all on the people. They just gave them a whole big bunch of list of do's and don'ts and said, if you don't do the do's and you don't do and you do the don'ts, I'm telling you right now, you're just going to go to hell. There's no way about it. And so many in the church today feel the same way. A preacher gets up and he preaches, well, you got to do this and you don't do this and you got to do that and you don't do this. Sunday school teachers do the same thing. And if you don't follow all these lists, then, then obviously you're just not right. Brothers and sisters, you cannot boil down your relationship with Jesus Christ to a list of commands of do's and don'ts. That's not what our life is about. And many people in the church today are wore down, exhausted, and beaten because they can't keep up with so-and-so or they can't keep up with this list. And if they don't do this and they don't complete their list, then obviously they're not doing what God wants them to do. And so we get burdened and we get beat down. And Jesus showed a great disdain for this law that the, that the Pharisees had come up with. A frustration in his heart 
He called them hypocrites. He called them whitewashed tombs. And we must address our own lives and see if we've not become as they and and put unwarranted burdens on ourselves and especially others. How many of us, when we find somebody that has done wrong, rather than doing what Paul wrote in Galatians, which is bear one another's burdens, we want to be like the Pharisees and say, how dare you? I can't believe you did that. You're a failure. Rather than looking at him and saying, you know what? Been there, done that. God gave me victory. He can give you victory. And let's work through this together. Is that, what we're, is that not what we're supposed to do as children of God? To bear the burdens of one another? But the Pharisees weren't that way. And as disciples, we can find ourselves weighted down by undue burdens. As disciples, we can find ourselves weighted down by undue burdens. It says, all ye, the, all ye that labor are heavy laden. Contextually, Jesus is talking to the Jews. And he's saying, all you are heavy laden. And weighed down. What were they weighed down by? They were weighed down by the law. They were weighed down by by the the checklist of do's and don'ts. They were weighed down on on, did they achieve this? Did they achieve that? Did Did they do all this? And we need to realize that not all burdens in life that we carry we're not meant, not all of them are we meant to carry. Do we understand that this morning? Let me help you out. You cannot be perfect. I know that's hard for some of you to get this morning. But you're not perfect. How dare that preacher judge me? I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you the facts. If there was anybody close to it, hey, I'm it. That's just a joke, by the way. You can laugh. Mary, one time, I was getting ready in the mirror one morning, and this is years ago. We were get, I was getting ready, and she looked at me, and she said, I love you. I turned around, and I looked in that mirror, and I said, turned around, looked at her, and said, how could you not? And she looked at me, and she said, you make me want to take back everything I just said. I said, it's too late. It's already there. Look, none of us are perfect. If I was to ask you this morning to raise your hands, which one of you have missed the mark? Every one of you better raise your hand. Because the one who says they have no sin is a liar, and the truth is not in them. Okay? We can't have these burdens. That doesn't mean that we don't strive for faithfulness. That doesn't mean that we don't work for the Lord. But we need to realize we're not going to be perfect. We're going to fail. We're going to fall. But what happens when you fall? You get up and you keep going, amen? This was the issue with the Jewish people and the burden that was placed on them by the Pharisees. We find within the word of God that the Pharisees were putting on bur- were putting burdens on the people, but they themselves wouldn't even assist in helping them with the burdens. Matthew 23 and 4 says, For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, talking about the law, talking about the command, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Brothers and sisters, we don't need more do's and don'ts in the church of God today. We need more about Jesus and his love and his grace and his redemptive healing power and how he can change your life and he can remove the stain of sin in your life and the power of sin in your life And the chains of sin in your life. Brothers and sisters, we need to understand this morning, you do not come to church to get ready for God. You come to God, period, to get ready, period. It's not about getting ready. Well, I have so many times I've heard this, well, I'll go to church, preacher, when when I'm better. I'm just not good enough yet. Who told you you weren't good enough to go to church? Somebody down the line has lied to that person. Brothers and sisters, the church is to be a hospital for the sinner, not hospice for the saint. Amen? He didn't come to seek and save the redeemed. He came to seek and save the lost. 
And so Jesus looks at these people that were burdened, that were heavy laden by this law and these extra laws and never being able to fulfill any of them. And many of us face that burden of self-righteousness and try to make it through life and hope to get into heaven on our own merit and by comparing ourselves to others. If I'm better than so-and-so, then I'm bound for the kingdom. That's not how it works, people. Do we need to understand that today? You're not going to get into heaven on your self-righteousness. You're not going to get into heaven on your works and how perfect you are and everything. That's not how it's going to happen. If we tried to get into heaven based on what we do, each and every one of us will end up in hell, I promise you. I'm not being rude. I'm not trying to be judgmental. The Bible says that none is perfect, no, not one. The Bible says that we're saved by grace through faith, not of our own works, but it is the gift of God that what? No man shall boast. Brothers and sisters, it's not about our works. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ, and it's about trusting in Him. Because we need to realize that having an ideology that we got to have this work and we got to do this, that type of righteousness is no better than that of the Pharisees. As described in the Holman New Testament commentary, if you continue carrying the heavy burdens of work-oriented, self-serving fairyism, you will never rest. How are you ever going to find contentment in the Lord if your salvation is based off of what you have or have not done? How are you ever going to find contentment in the Lord if it's based on what you did yesterday or the, yes, the day before yesterday? How many pages I read in the Bible? I would rather you spend 20 minutes on one verse and dig in on that verse for 20 minutes and know everything there is you could possibly find out, then just read the Bible for 20 minutes and not get any of it. There is a difference between studying the Word of God and reading the Word of God. Amen? Trust me, I know. When I was in school, and Matt can testify to this, you read 150 pages in, each, in one class, and you're just sitting there reading it. And sitting there reading it. You're not retaining any of that. You get some high points, but for the most part, after the end of the class, you're like, you're like, well, that was eight weeks of craziness. Let's go to the next one. And so the next question comes up. Brothers and sisters, God doesn't want us just to read his word. He wants us to study his word. To know what it's like to have a relationship with him. If you were to, do you, how often do you invest in your spouse and your children? need to invest in the Lord in that relationship invest doing what he has called us to do not what we think we ought to do we need to realize that not all not all as disciples we can find ourselves weighed down by undue, bur by undue burdens but as disciples we do have a burden to bear just because you're a child of God doesn't mean the work stops just because we're not saved by works doesn't mean that we stop serving that doesn't mean that we don't have rules to abide by. So we find in our text, he says, it says, Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Being disciple is not about, is, is, is not about doing anything. Truly, while we may not be saved by works, we are created for good works. Amen? As the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But in verse 10 it says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So Jesus makes clear on his first text, he says, Come unto me, all you that are weary and burdened and weighed down. He said, Come unto me. And then he says, For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It may, we may not understand this terminology now, but in the first century they understood what a yoke was. A yoke was a, was a wooden bar that went on two beasts that, that were used for cattle, that, that used to till the ground, do some kind of work or whatever, and that was put on them, but they were trained up for that. They were used for that. That's what they were used for. 
It didn't mean that work stopped. What it meant is they did the work they were there for. To, they were there to do. Brothers and sisters, each and every one of us have a ministry to do and a work to do. However, the work that we have to do is the work that we were created to do. I'll never forget when I was battling the call. You can say whatever you want to. You can laugh at me. Whatever, I don't care. But I, I, I will tell you this. When I was battling the call, I woke up one morning. God, it, God was really dealing with me. I was 22 years old. I'd been fighting God. I've been running for four years. That week, me and God just had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. and I told him I was tired of fighting God. I, I, if this is what you want me to do, then that's what I'll do. But God, I'm stupid, and you've got to show me something. You, you really, I mean, I, I don't know about you, man, but I can, really, I can really be honest about this. I'm stupid, and I need pictures, okay? Uh, most men want that. I need it, okay? And so I got up that morning. I'm ironing my clothes to go to work. My dad leaves. My dad's 35 minutes from his job, from our house to his job is 35 minutes. My dad had been gone for about 30 minutes. All of a sudden, he comes busting through the door. Scared the fire out of me. I'm like, who's busting through my door? And my dad comes in there and looks at me and he says, Charles, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but God has told me, because my dad didn't know. I hadn't even talked to my dad. He said, God has told me to tell you that he has given you all the tools that he deems necessary for your work to get done. He said, now that I said that, I'm going to work. He drove 20 minutes to work. But God wouldn't let him go to work until he come back and said, Charles, God's got a message for you. Brothers and sisters, let me explain this to you. God's already given you tools to work in his kingdom. And it's a particular set of tools for your work in his kingdom. You're not created to do everything in the kingdom of God. But you're created to do something in the kingdom of God. Amen? We all have a message. We all have a ministry. We all have a calling. Each of us have the work to do that is molded toward our certain gifting. Jesus, within our text, Quotes the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah is prophesying to a rebellious Jude and the people that have wandered away from God, got call in their life, and God spoke to Jeremiah the following to the people of Judah. He says, Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the way and see, and ask for the old path, where is the good way, and walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Jeremiah told the people to get back to what God wants. Amen? Get back to what God called you to do. Brothers and sisters, each of us know what our gifts are, what our talents are. Maybe it's to teach children. Maybe it's to teach youth. Maybe it's to play the organ or piano. Maybe it's to teach a Sunday school class. Maybe it's to write cards to people and encourage people. The church needs a ton of Barnabases. Maybe it's fellowship. Maybe it's just a smile and a handshake at the back when they're coming in. Not everybody's called to be a pastor. Not everybody's called to be a deacon. Not everybody's called to do nursery. But people are called to do and serve. Amen? And we can't guilt somebody into something that they, they're not called to do. But brothers and sisters, you should be willing and jumping up to do what God has called you and trained you and equipped you to do. And when we do what he's called us to do, there's rest in that, there's joy in that, there's happiness in that. Get back to the old ways and trusting the Lord rather than trusting your own self-righteousness. It's not about comparing ourselves to others or keeping up with the spiritual Joneses. It's about trusting the Lord and trusting his way. Not your way, not my way, but his way. We have work to do. He says, take my yoke upon you. But our work is easy, for it's work that we're created for, gifted for, equipped for. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
It's amazing what happens. And I'm going to give you an idea. It's amazing what happens when you find yourself performing ministry services in areas that you were gifted and called to do. It's amazing how easy it is doing something you're trained to do. I'll never forget working and managing in restaurants. And, and I had been a manager for some time now. And there was this other guy. And he just thought that was the easiest thing in the world. He says, he says man, I want to be a manager. He said, I can do it. I said, really? He goes, you know, you always hear, well, you know, they're, they're in management for a reason. And the reason is they don't know what they're doing, and so they just put them in there to act like they know what they're doing. That's what I've always heard about managers. And, and I was in management, and I looked at the guy, and he goes, man, he said, he says, brother, he said, Charles, I could take your job any day of the week. You just, I mean, you just do nothing. And I looked at him and said, really? I said, that's all right. And I said, okay. And so what happened is, is I quit. I was, I was quitting about two or three months later, and the owner come up to me, and he says, who do you think I should promote as manager? I said, him. And he looks at me and he goes, now, Charles, he said, I can't. I said, Bill, don't make him an assistant manager. Don't make him a GM. I said, just make him a shift leader. I said, look, hire two or three shift leaders. You can replace me. It'll make less money. For, it, 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 it'll actually be cheaper on you instead of hiring somebody like me again. And we'll be all right. Well, I came in about two or three weeks later after he had gotten, after he had gotten the helm, become management. I come in. I hadn't even went inside the store. He comes running out to my car. He says, can you come back? And I said, for what? And he goes, he said, I can't do this. And I said, but remember, it was easy. What it was is he was taking on a role and a responsibility that wasn't his. He couldn't handle the pressure. Too many times in church, we try to take on responsibility and roles that we were never created to take, and so therefore serving the Lord is no longer fun. But when we do something that God has called us to do, it's a blast. If God has gifted you to work with children, work with them. They're a blast. If God's gifted you to work with youth, do it. They're a blast. Sunday school, a blast. It is amazing what happens when you do stuff that God has called you to do and how much fun it involves when it's, that ha when it's happening that way. Amen? But we're all called to serve, regardless of what that area of service is. And so Jesus tells him, look, he said, there's rest in my yoke. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. I was, when, I, when I surrendered to the ministry, I went to Brother Bob. Y'all know Brother Bob. He's been my pastor for umpteen years. I went to Brother Bob and I said, Brother Bob, I believe God's calling me to the ministry. What's your advice for me? He said, if you can do anything else, do it. I looked at him and said, what? He goes, if you can do anything else, do it. He said, but if you can't do anything else and be happy, then you know. He's absolutely right. If I'm not happy, I'm absolutely miserable. I don't care how many headaches gripes, how many fights, how many arguments, how much struggle and trouble and issues I face as a pastor. It's all worth it, being able to tell others about Jesus Christ. I have the greatest calling and vocation in the world, to tell others about Christ. It's not easy. It's hard. It's time consuming. It's sacrifice. It's sacrificial. When the one kid looks at the other kid and says, it's his only day off and it's Monday, and he goes, well, that's the only day he gets off anyway. So, what, I mean, what else do you want? When your wife looks at you and says, well, I guess I'll see you in a couple hours or ten hours later. Or you miss ball games. You miss all kinds of stuff. It's sacrificial. But it's worth it when you're doing what God has called you to do. Because when you're doing what God has called you to do, it doesn't seem like work. Amen? It's a joy. Find those things that make you happy, that God has called you to do, and do it. But do it. Because in that we find rest in the Lord. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
It is amazing what happens and the joy we find in performing ministry service in areas we were gifted and called to do rather than trying to answer a call that was never given to us in the first place. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And as disciples, we find rest in the Lord. Our rest is found in the person of the Lord, not in commands and words. He says, come unto me. He doesn't say, come unto my command. He doesn't say, come unto my law. He says, come unto me. You will never find rest in a list of do's and don'ts. Amen? But you'll find rest in the Lord. Our rest is found in following the Lord. Learn from me. Learn from me. Following him, allowing him to teach us, to equip us, to train us. And our rest is found in the spirit of the Lord. For I'm meek and lowly in heart. I wonder how many of us this morning find ourselves grind and powder by the burdens of life. How many of us today find ourselves being grinded to powder by a list of religious do's and don'ts? How many of us find ourselves being grinded to powder by trying to do ministry service without a calling to a particular area? We are called to work. We're called to serve. But each of us have a place of service that we're called to. Each of us will find rest when we do not put our joy in the obedience, but rather place our joy in the one we are serving. It's about putting our joy in the Lord. Amen? Doing all that we do, just doing it for God. Doing it according to our gifts and talents, but doing it for God. And that, my dear brothers and sisters, is the person we find peace in, Jesus Christ. And do you know him today? Because I'm here to tell you this morning, if you're trying to find joy in you, you're not going to find it. If you're trying to find joy in your work and all that you obtain, your friends, your past, your present, or your future, you're never going to find it. There's only one place of joy, one place of peace, one place of comfort, and that's in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Do you know him today? Everybody stand, please. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Where are you at today? Father, we come before you this morning. and God, we seek you and we seek your truth. We pray, Father, if there's anyone here this morning that doesn't know your son Jesus as Lord and Savior, they'll walk this aisle and say, I need you. God, if there's other burdens that we just need to give to the altar, Lord, let us do it. God, let us leave here changed.